but uh, just on that historicity point, uh, Maurice Bocquois, in like uh, it's about 70 years ago that he engaged in this study. He said, well, Jewish history contradicts what the Quran is saying about Haman and this tower building. Let's look at Egyptology. Let's look at Egyptian history. Because the French and the Germans at the early part, the late part of the 1800s had already started translating or, or getting into Egyptian hieroglyphics and re reformulating the language to try to translate some of the ancient Egyptian texts. Egyptology was a big deal in the early 1900s even. So he travels uh, to speak to some of these Egyptologists, says to them the Quran has this name, Haman, as a minister working for the historical pharaoh at the time of Moses, that specific pharaoh. Egyptologists tell him, and this is actually articulated in his book, The Bible, Quran, and Science, um, that there's no way this man could have known that name. And we probably it's not even going to be there because that language, the Egyptian hieroglyphic language, was already dead for a couple of thousand years. Nobody knew that language. After translation, he goes to Austria and finds out there's actually a list of people that worked in the, uh, the, the, the court of, uh, of Pharaoh. They find Haman as the chief architect that's actually found in Egyptology, a name mentioned in the Qur'an. That's him there, with rolls of fat to show he's prosperous. Now, when I got into Arabic studies and I, uh, I, I started diving into this question of what makes the Qur'an miraculous, I started discovering things that literally they overpowered me. And I'm still a student of them. I actually teach a seminar that's traveling the country called Divine Speech. And the entire intent of the seminar is to expose the literary marvel of the Qur'an to an English-speaking audience without resorting to Arabic. That's, my, that's the seminar. Now, just one example. The Qur'an, Muslims believe, is a spoken word, it's not written. We also believe that Muhammad didn't have the ability to write. We also know that when he would recite the Qur'an, there would be dozens of followers and they would immediately memorize what he said, and it would just spread. So there's no editorial process. You can't go back on what you recited. It's gone, it's out there now, you can't take it back. It's kind of like sending an email nowadays, right? Now, one just as an example, one phrase in the Qur'an that's part of a large discussion is the phrase وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ In Arabic it says وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ which means, and declare the greatness only of your Lord. Now recall I said something about a fusion of style and content. This, the content is beautiful and it's part of a passage in which 
the, the signs of the Lord have been mentioned, the struggle has been mentioned, and then the messenger is being told, declare the greatness only of your Lord. What's interesting is the phrase, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ is a palindrome. In other words, it spells backwards and forwards the same way. So the Qur'an is declaring the greatness of the Lord in a way, in its spelling form, and there's multiple instances in the spoken Qur'an, that it, it's actually a linguistic palindrome. Now, when you want to generate a palindrome in English, like uh, race car, or Bob, or Dad, or something like that, small one-syllable ones are easy to generate. Maybe a big word is a little harder, but a sentence, it would take you some time to sit down with words that are spelled backwards and forwards and come up with something that... And then even if you do that, your concern isn't your content. What's your concern? The spelling. So the spelling is actually dictating your content. Here you have multiple instances in the Qur'an where this, the content hasn't been altered. The content is continued, it flows with the passage, and yet the spelling structure is, you know, it, it's a palindrome, it's symmetrical backwards and forwards the same way. And this is not one, these are multiple instances in the Qur'an, and this is one area of the many areas of the linguistic marvel of the Qur'an. Thank you.